Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm going to be covering a few of the videos that we've seen recently, like the Super Simple Strawberry System version two. We've got the Kratky Tomatoes, the Grow Wick Potted Terracotta System, and I'm gonna give you a quick look at how all the other systems are going, as well as a bit of tidy up. There's a lot of problems in this episode, in the sense of I've had quite a lot of stuff go wrong around the place and we'll be covering how I've dealt with those as well as some sneak peeks in the studio at the end and a personal thank you from myself to every single one of you viewers for what has been an absolute roller coaster over six months but I'll cover that at the end of the video. So first things first I want to talk about the Beto bucket system, because it is an absolute mess at the moment. And here it is. At the back, we have a variety of dwarf tomato called Black Stripes Antho. And I generally adore this tomato. It is a really nice heirloom variety, and it produces this amazing striped fruit. So here is an immature one, but you can see, you can see the striations, and it goes this really nice purple black and red at the end of its maturity. Now, this is a rarity because of the rodent problem I've been having, and you can see up here, which is really disappointing, where I've got large tomatoes just being munched on before they even get to any maturity. As well as this problem, I've, you can also see that all my jalapeno bushes are falling down at the front because of the weight of the jalapenos and an inadequate support system. I've just been using stakes to hold them up and I've been using tomato clips to hold them to the stakes. But because of the fruit set being so large, they've just fallen over. I'm gonna cut them all down and I'll do a quick weigh in of how many of the jalapenos that I've still got on the bushes because I have been giving them away. But we'll have a look at what one, two, three, what nine plants can get you over a grow in the Beto buckets. Actually, that's pretty impressive in itself. That is one plant. That is just one plant. Okay, so one plant, 600 grams. So, let's have a look at the rest. 3.596 kilograms. Three and a half kilos of jalapenos. So I've definitely got some pickling to do. <laughs> That's great. Three and a half kilos of nine plants and i would say that some of those plants had more than their share because i actually had one plant that didn't have any fruit on it at all which was kind of interesting and actually as i moved down towards that end i found that the plants were having less fruit and less large fruit especially in the middle uh, where they weren't getting as much light i think that's actually the problem that i'm facing in the foreground, we have the ground-based NFT. Now, I'm not really a fan of this system at all, purely for the size of the reservoir, not keeping the nutrient solution cool, and it's been stressing the plants. You can see all of the capsicums on the ground in front of me. They all have pests. Now, these pests are getting into the greenhouse with the ants, but they're not affecting my healthy Beto bucket Capsicums, they're just affecting the ones in this system. And the reason I put that down to is because uh, these ones are extremely stressed because they're in a warm water environment, lack of oxygen, they are susceptible to the pests. They're also on the ground, which makes it a lot easier for the ants to get to them. So the ants would just be climbing the plants and placing the aphids on the plants. So. I'm gonna get rid of all these to get rid of the pests at the same time as getting rid of this ground-based system because I'm not particularly a fan of it at all. <laughs> Look at that. Much better, so much more space. So our cracked key tomatoes are going really well. I'm actually going to be stealing a heap of the ripe fruit before the rodents get to it. And I'm a bit late with some, unfortunately. I have been getting not much, to be honest. I've been getting about 30% of the fruit 
that starts to ripen. So I've been trying to steal it just before it ripens and you can see the problem here. That is not completely ripe. I would usually leave that a little bit longer, but they do jump on it really fast. So what I'm actually going to be doing is these tomatoes are all at the point where I believe they'll ripen on their own. So I'm going to be cutting down these tomatoes and we'll have a look at the EC and the pH within our crack key system because that's something I didn't do in the video and a few people asked for it in the comments. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut these plants down, I'll grab the tomatoes off them, I'll show you the tomatoes and then we can look at the EC and the pH. Let's look at that. Lovely. So this one's the largest one. You can see largest roots. Really nice roots actually. And have a look, get you in closer. I'll actually show you because that's what's at the bottom and you can see the cocoa that's come out and into the nutrient solution. And here's the interesting part will be the pH is low as 4.1. The EC is high as, so that's 7.36. So this tomato plant was selectively using a lot more water. So I could have topped this up with water. My water tends to drop the pH. So I would have had to add in pH up to raise that nutrient back up to the level. We'll move on to the next one. This one, I've got a pH of 5.1. So the pH isn't that bad. And that actually makes me think that the calcium deficiencies, the blossom end rot, was caused by the pH shifting in that tub. And the EC is 6.5, so that's high EC again, so the plant was selectively using water over the nutrient. We've got more nutrient solution in this one. We've got an EC of 4.4 and a pH of 6.3. So this one was doing absolutely fine. It's within range of pH and it's only got a slightly high EC. Well, two EC above what I would have it at. So what this tells me is if I'm going to do infinite crack here in the future, I'm gonna be wanting to top up with pH adjusted, but mid half strength nutrient. So that I'm diluting the nutrient solution that is left uh, with lower strength nutrient that's what I'll be doing with these buckets in a future video. I'm going to be doing infinite crack key, probably with some cucurbits. So I just want to talk to you quickly about the NFT before we move to the strawberry system. I came out to this NFT in absolute disarray. A team working on the grid up the road, they turned off the power and it caused the NFT to turn off, obviously, because it's not on backup. That was a massive problem purely because of this new technique that I'm using. Now, I love it. I 100% recommend it, but if you do have a power shortage, the cotton ball technique that I've been using for the NFT does not have any redundancy to it at all. Let me explain what I mean by that. The other techniques that are using perhaps some amount of grow media, for instance, the 42 millimeter jiffies, that grow media retains some amount of nutrient and water. And that nutrient and water gives you a tiny buffer, maybe a few hours where especially lettuce, which aren't utilizing a ton of nutrient and water at any one time, they are able to survive hours even throughout the hottest point in the day on the nutrient and water within that Jiffy pellet. With the cotton wool technique, there is absolutely nothing surrounding those roots. Because the cotton wool is almost completely taken up, there is literally nothing that is able to hold water in the roots of this technique. Now, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I think that this is a remarkably good option purely for the cost factor, the lack of environmental impact factor, and the renewable factor. The cotton balls are a renewable resource. They're a small, easy to transport, and lightweight product that gives you a decent 
amount of media to start seeds in and then bring them into a system like this. We only need it for the propagation section. And as long as you have got a solid energy supply or a backup system, like a backup battery, which I'll probably be putting this system onto, maybe a UPS or even a solar powered NFT so that I have complete confidence in the reliability of this system. But as long as you have that solid power grid or consistent power, this technique I'm going to be sticking with. But I just wanted to let you know that this is a problem with this technique due to the lack of grow media holding water and nutrient. Other than that, they did bounce back the next day and as you can see, they're doing really well. However, I will point out that ever since that happened, they have got leggy because I believe that that would have stressed them so much that they've started to bolt and go to flower, which I don't blame them for. That is their natural response to such a stressful incident. They want to put all their energy into seeding so that they have a lifeboat into the next generation. All right, in front of you, you've got the super simple strawberry system version two, and this one is doing absolutely great. So I am quite happy with this system in here. As you can see, all the strawberries are doing really well. There are a few down the front that aren't doing so well. However, I'm just going to be transplanting some of the runners that we have coming off the other strawberries into those spots to fill it up. They're not doing as well as I thought or would like, but they are doing much better than their counterparts outside. And I think that's because of the environment that I've got them. This greenhouse does cut out some of the light. I've got 30% shade cloth on the outside and the roof is dirty, so it is definitely cutting down a little bit of light as well as it reduces the UV. I'll show you the ones outside. They're not doing too well at all. And here they are. I've got a few survivors and they were doing a little bit better when it wasn't so intensely hot, but it's been absolutely cooking and these bags are extremely hot, way hotter than the ones inside. So I feel like the roots have been cooked and the rest of the plants have been cooked as well. Just got to get that camera out of the heat because it's about to cook as well. Even I'm struggling with the heat, um, as you can see. Yeah, I am not happy with where this system is. Uh, I'm going to need to shade it uh, with some shade cloth or move it to a shadier location these plants are struggling hard and the black plastic is definitely not helping. Uh, I think they will do better over the cooler months. So I'll take, it, I'll take these guys into autumn and see how they do in these bags. But it is definitely something that I'm going to have to keep an eye on over the summer. I'm going to pair strawberries for next summer by having them in these bags indoors until they have a nice canopy which shades the bags from the sun and the canopy cools the bags by evaporative cooling causing a microclimate over the top. So I want to get them into a stage where they don't have to push through the heat and save themselves essentially before I get them out into the heat next summer. So that is a lesson that I have learned here. You're getting some weird angles here because I've got to keep that camera in the shade. This is the rain gutter grow system. The old school rain gutter grow system, my first rain gutter grow system, and I've planted in it cucurbits. I've got zucchinis and they're doing fantastically, as well as we have over here the turmerics and the gingers, which are also going crazy. As well as these turmeric and gingers, we have the turmeric and ginger hydroponic system that I have been making a video on and time-lapsing for over a year now and this system is doing amazingly. I am super happy with the technique and I'm excited to share it with you and this has been the least maintenance system that I've ever maintained. I've literally done nothing to these except for I've cut the tops of the bags a little to let more of the shoots out because they kind of just shoot out wherever they want. So they were pushing up on the internals of the bags and not able to get out. I would start them again by just cutting the tops of the bags. 
Now it was really hard to get this all in view, but this is the float box hydroponic system, which I have cucurbits, uh, zucchini and pumpkins. I've also got some herbs, parsley and basil throughout, but they're actually mostly being taken over by the pumpkins and the zucchinis. They're doing really well. I've got fungal infections on them, which I've been trying really hard to fight back, but I do have a bit of fruit set on them and I'm pretty happy with that. Behind me I've got the dragon fruit hydroponic system which has been going really well. It just keeps growing. I haven't seen any flowers on it yet which I thought I would have by now but it's the healthiest dragon fruit that I've ever seen and I'm not going to complain as long as they keep growing and stay that shade of green I'm extremely happy with that method of nutrient delivery which is just the water on top drain to waste method of hydroponic delivery. Behind the dragon fruit, I have the potted terracotta system. Now the potted terracotta system I've had some problems with. Now the problems aren't the system itself. The system itself is providing a really nice moist medium for the plants. The problems are pest problems and it seems like a theme here. Yes, it is. The capsicum are getting destroyed by what I think are hares coming in the night and eating all the leaves and same with tomatoes. The tomatoes have actually got a lot of fruit set which is nice. They're not touching the basil or the rosemary so I might just turn this into a herb system and rather than indoors where I've got all of the flood and drain being taken over by oregano, thyme and basil, I might just have the oregano and thyme and basil out here so that I can free up my flutter and drain for more valuable crops that require protection as is being provided in that greenhouse. Whereas the basil and all of the herbs tend not to be eaten by things that don't like the taste of herbs. So I'm actually very pleased with this system. Um, it's providing a really nice, as you can see here, the roots are exploring around that cocoa and it's nice and moist and that is great because it is providing if I squeeze it we have nutrient in it it is providing a nice rich oxygenated material for those plants that is ideal so the grow wicks are doing their job and I can give this system a thumbs up over here we've got the drain to waste feed from above so I've just been watering these with watering cans and this is actually one of my favorite techniques because I've seen the most explosive growth out of this technique. Uh, I think it's because you are giving fresh nutrient from the top and it is draining down and the old nutrient is draining out the bottom. Now if you have the time this is a fantastic hassle free, 3D print free and free as in there's actually no equipment required other than a watering can. It is a fantastic method and underrated I think but uh, it is effort intensive. The way around this is a future system that I've got planned that is a irrigation auto watering gravity fed but on a timer top feeding system where we drain to waste. Now this requires some really nice dialing in of that schedule because you don't want to just be running nutrient out and having to refill a res all the time because that would be expensive. But if we can get that irrigation system dialed in, I think that this is going to be one of the most productive techniques that we cover. The auto refilling sources are doing their job and I'm extremely happy with them. I will be changing that design soon because some of the lids are warping in the sun. Uh, whether this is the filament that I'm using or not, but the design of the lid for the float box is what I'm going to base the new design on because these lids have proven remarkably resilient. And I think it's because the lip is on the top, which holds them from curling um, because that's what they do in the heat of my sun. Uh, they probably won't do it everywhere, but um, definitely in my sun's heat, they they tend to curl towards the side that is the hottest. This would be getting extremely hot as a, a black filament, but the float box lids, they hold their shape a lot better than the other lid that I designed, and I didn't realize that at the time. I'd say it's because of this lip on the external of the float box lid, and I'll show you what I mean. You can see 
that the way that it's folding backwards, uh, the lip here is holding the float box lid nice and sturdy, whereas the internal lip on this one um, is actually bending backwards um, and it's not giving it enough support from the back. So if I had if I had this up this way and the sun on this side, I think that I'd have a better, more reliable print for hot areas. So I'm going to redesign this lid and I'm also going to put a hinge on it similar to the float box lid so that um, we can have a hinged lid that stays on. All of the auto refilling fruit trees are doing really well. I've got a really nice canopy on the older ones and the newer ones are putting out new shoots, which is lovely as well. These are all working extremely well and I'm really happy with these systems. Over to the left, I've got a bit of a tragedy. So this is the cucumber system that I did in my last update. And this isn't actually the fault of the bagged system. They were doing really well. It's just that my dogs love to get up real close to the chickens in the chicken pen and they tend to destroy anything that is in their way. So they've come and decapitated all of these plants and the ones at the end were also d demolished by them and I replaced them and that's why we've got younger alive plants here. This is a bit of a tragedy that I wasn't very happy with my two pups about. Um, but hopefully these ones take off and I'm going to relocate this system to an area that doesn't get traffic from the two terrors. So let's go to the studio. Okay, so here is a sneak peek. Here I have time lapsing. These are micro toms and they are in the mini 3D printable Beto bucket hydroponic system that I released a month or so ago. And I'm pretty excited to see how it runs. So they are doing pretty well. As you can see, I've got a time-lapse camera running in the front there. A few people have asked me what time-lapse camera I use. I've actually got a video on that um, explaining the time-lapse cameras. I originally used the Wise Cam V2 and then I switched to the Wise Cam V3 and Wise has re recently released the V3 Pro, which just gives a larger 2K picture and I'm looking forward to seeing how those time lapses come out. In fact, you probably saw one at the start of this video. Okay, so over here I have a selection of plants in the DIY propagation area that I built in my DIY propagation shelving video. Um, I've got, these are passion fruit on this side and some micro toms over here. A selection of cucumbers and peas, which will be going out into a system in the very near future. I have here, just starting out, I've got some large pumpkins, which I'll be putting into an infinite cracky system that I've got planned. And over this side, I've got zucchinis and cucumbers. In our cotton wool buds, I have lettuce. And this will be going into our vertical indoor NFT hydroponic system. Okay, so it has been an absolute roller coaster of six months. It has evolved from one of the darkest places in my life to one of the brightest futures that I've ever had on the horizon. And I honestly cannot thank you guys enough whether you're supporting me on Patreon, whether you're one of the amazing people who donated to the GoFundMe, whether you just view my videos on occasion because you get some enjoyment out of gardening. I appreciate every one of you and I want to say thank you so much for supporting the channel in your own way. It is this amazing community that I hope to serve for a long time. And you guys have legitimately enabled me to keep my house, my property, my studio, my sanity, everything. The GoFundMe raised over $20,000, which is just mind blowing. And that $20,000 actually got me over the line to pay for the house 
because I had to go to second rate lenders, the banks wouldn't support me because my business is so young. And it just got me where I needed to be. Like I was a hair away from not securing this place and you got me there. I am indebted to you guys and I plan on repaying it with some amazing content. I would do this anyway because I love the videos, I love the creativity, I love the inspiration, I love putting pieces of puzzle together to create something new. I love it all. And that has been identified by YouTube. I got a call at the end of last year to collaborate with them on exclusive content. So keep an eye out for that space. I'm super excited to be working directly with them and I am eternally grateful because without the support that you gave me in that dark time, I don't know where I would have gone or what I would have done if I didn't have a solid place to create these videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to people like Nick Swift who contacted me and said that I'd provided him with something that was changing his life and he wanted to give something back. Nick made me this awesome knife. His passion is making blades and he reached out, returned the favor with a beautiful piece of equipment. I've been using the knife to cut up all the produce I've been producing and it's even got my colors on the hilt and I wanna repay him by giving him a little bit of exposure. If you want a beautiful piece of art created, contact Nick Swift Cutlery. It's little community interactions like this that I have been experiencing throughout the growth of the channel from the start to the finish. The community interactions that individual community members are having with each other are on the platforms like the subreddit page and the Facebook group. So if you wanna be a part of those interactions where we're just helping each other to figure out problems, show off our hydroponic systems and just generally build community spirit, jump over to the Facebook page or the subreddit and you can interact with other like-minded people. So I want to once again, thank you so much for watching this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking and I will see you next time. Thank you.